Hello folks. Welcome to something I thought I would never do, which is attempt to convert a non-BMW vehicle. Now, little background, it's not mine, but belongs to a friend of a friend. And unfortunately, uh, someone made a very ham-fisted attempt at performing a conversion on it. And we're going to have to uh, work out the problems and see if we can get this thing driving. So, let's go have a look. Any guesses at this stage what exa exactly I'm sitting in? No? Well, me neither, but it does have a headliner problem that I will have to solve with my little twisty headliner fixers. So, let's go have a look. Ah... <sighs> Well, it beeps. So, welcome to... This. What we've got ourselves here is one big-ass piece of British engineering in the form of a Range Rover. Now, one thing I do very much like about it is the seats. They're really good heated electric seats. There's a uh, quite good for my back. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, interior is not in bad condition. Let's say unfortunately the headliner needs a bit of a uh, bit of pinning, but uh, by far and away not the most serious problem. Uh, that's affecting this particular vehicle. Um, so underneath it, instead of the usual uh, gearbox and V8 and transfer box, there are two of those motors that seem to follow me around no matter where I go in the shape of those horrible Anova motor and gearbox combos. I can't really show you because this horrific battery box is uh, stuck here in the way. So, might just be able to see down there if I go in, you'll see one of the drive shafts to the front diff. Uh, so that's going back to one of two of those Anova motors. Um, that's basically planked in there. I'll, well, I can't really show you at the minute because I can't, haven't got enough clearance to go in there because um, the air suspension is obviously not functioning. In the back here is something slightly better uh, in the shape of the rear battery box. Uh, we got 10 of these valence, um, really they're 12 volt batteries in there. There's 10 here and 12 up the front. Um, the box here is definitely better than the one up front. Um, so it's got that going for it but i'm pretty much at this stage trying to make a plan of the best way to proceed um i've had the vehicle for some time now and i just want to really i just want to get it i just want to get it driving so we can start working the kinks out um overall i guess it's not in bad shape uh bodywork is pretty straight on it but yeah we've got you know there's a load of junk in the back um it's pretty much just got the battery boxes and the motors mounted there's been nothing done you know interior wise in terms of making it an ev We've, you know, we've no shifter in there. We don't, we don't have an electronic throttle pedal, so that's going to have to go in. You know, we'll have all the usual suspects here, like the power steering and so on. It does seem to have a power brake pump of its own, which I just discovered uh, recently. So that's good. Um, 
power steering is hydraulic that'll be pretty straightforward but again like stuff has been just thrown in here um, I think the person that was originally doing the conversion just either lost interest in it or just had no uh, desire to continue it um, my biggest problem as I say seems to be this front box here uh, so I'm gonna have to lose this I was hoping not have to but I am gonna pretty much have to lose this because uh, apart from you know any of the kind of safety concerns that I might have in and around it being sticking out the front here and so on uh, it means I can't fit a radiator here um, it's basically wasting space there's huge quantities of space here uh, down the sides that are just basically wasted um, the box itself has no way to secure the batteries in there so uh, yeah welcome to the Range Rover project guys um, I don't quite know how yet that I'm going to tackle this front area. Um, initially, because we have the two motors in here, I was hoping to use one of the Siemens Alpha Duo inverters. But again, the problem here is that with the space constraints that I have with that stupid battery box, um, there's basically, I mean, I, I can't get it in there. The only place then that I was thinking I could possibly put it would be in the back and it would fit in there uh, I could definitely fit it in because this is one big boot area um, but it just again the big problem is more or, l or less you know what do I do up up here because it's just not going to be, pra be practical to uh, proceed with putting stuff in while that thing is sitting there so <sighs> so that's it guys this is our Range Rover project uh, as I said it's been a while now I've had the vehicle a while uh, but we are finally now getting started on it so you're going to see some more updates on this pretty soon I do have some ideas uh, I'm running a few ideas around in my head in terms of what I'm going to do. Um, part of me really wants to lose those valence batteries totally. Uh, so I do have another pack that we could possibly put in here that would give us pretty much the same energy or more actually uh, with much, much less space. So I've just got to work out a couple of plans for it, but just wanted to introduce you to the project uh, so that you can you know see that I don't just work on beamers though I kind of would prefer to anyway all right hope you've enjoyed this one uh, do leave me a comment let me know what you think um, about it I mean one of the things that I love about it is that it's not the kind of a, a vehicle that you expect to be electric um, so that's definitely something I like I'm not one of these people that gets tied up with all this oh it's got to be small and light and aerodynamic and all that so that's pretty much none of the above so all right we will cut it there I'll get back to you when I have a better plan worked out and we start tearing into the work itself until then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check the various links in the description. And uh, until next time, happy range rovering. <laughs>